It is uh, around 11 o'clock in Cairns and it's around 26 degrees with a top temperature of 27 today. Uh, conversely in Melbourne 11 degrees and uh, a top of 12 so yeah you still got that cold snap unfortunately and uh, so just look after yourself probably best uh, probably good thing in a way you have to stay indoors and right now anyway but uh, I still feel for what you're going through overall in Melbourne so but I'm not actually going to be talking about uh, Melbourne specifically today it's actually I'm going to open talking about uh, what's happening in Sweden and the, the Swedes seem to be getting things right. Sky News uh, with uh, Rowan Dean had a, a, a segment saying that failure to follow Sweden's COVID success is going to will cost uh, future generations in Australia and I, I tend to agree with that I think that um, uh, the Swedes seem to have taken a much more measured approach to the COVID situation and uh, rather than going uh, one moment easing restrictions then putting on heavier restrictions going from one extreme to another they're just taking a steady as you go approach and they did have a number of uh, deaths uh, earlier on but they turned the corner in July and now they seem to be doing uh, a lot better uh, so it does appear as if herd immunity has kicked in although they've still got consistent uh, policies regarding uh, social distancing and hygiene and all the all the usual sort of preventative things and I think there's nothing wrong with with continuing on with those sorts of things um, because I think uh, that will improve our um, our uh, situation with normal flu apart from anything else because that's basically way down so it is working but it's interesting that to compare um, uh, Sweden with, say, Melbourne specifically, and I think uh, um, a lot of these stats are coming out of Stockholm, the biggest city, and there is a connection between Melbourne and Sweden, and that's in the in the guise of uh, ABBA. They got their big break in Melbourne years ago, and they were quite surprised uh, when they turned up to Melbourne and uh, saw the streets flooded with fans. I mean, that's what, that's the thing about Melbourne is that Melbourne and Victoria, people love to get out and watch sport or other big events. They also had a huge turnout for the Beatles as well. And they just flooded the streets. And that makes it even more uh, perverse that now Melbourne, as opposed to Sweden, is in total lockdown stage four and is one of the worst spots in the world right now. Um, because I guess they, they figured they could uh, basically defeat COVID. You can't defeat it. You have to manage it. And I think the Swedes have shown they've got a much better approach than we do uh, in Australia to, to managing this particular virus. And um, so it is interesting that, that the Swedes now have that freedom and Melbourne, which is inclined to have big crowds, that is normal for Melbourne is to get out and about in huge crowds though it's it's totally against the uh the the norm for for victorians and it's very sad and, and it must be causing a lot of uh, mental angst as well as as physical angst so it's, it's not a good situation but i look i think we should try to learn something from the the swedish um yeah they had no lockdown they like i said social distancing they had um and they had this, the, a restriction on the size of crowds. And they're reasonable sort of um, restrictions you can live with. But what's happening in Melbourne now, you can't have friends visiting. You know, it's just really draconian. And this is not the way to manage it. And part of the fact that it's absolutely crippling the economy. Uh, that's the obvious big downside there. And, you know, Angus uh, Tegnell, uh, who is there basically the guru of this, uh, this particular... Uh, uh, strategy. Uh, he came in for a bit of flack because you know, death rates did go up at one stage, but he 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 held his nerve and he's and they've stuck to the course. Un unlike a lot of politicians in the West, they haven't gone uh, up and down like a yo-yo with, with their responses. There's really been uh, no cohesion in a lot of places, and that's caused problems. But but uh, hats off to uh, Anders um, Tegnell because he at least he's been consistent. And he stuck to his guns. And he was saying that in Britain, they're actually now falling for the trap 
of opening and then closing schools and uh, with no consistency. And he says, no, that's not the way to do it. This, this is the knee-jerk reactions of the West because politicians are so worried about alienating the voters. Sometimes these politicians got to look at themselves and say, well, look, maybe we'll get some respect from the electorate by actually sticking to our guns. And I think someone like Peter Dutton in, in, uh, in Australia is, is that type of politician. And actually, he's looking better than, than uh, Morrison right now because Morrison's coming under a bit of stick because he's had this, this, these meetings with all the premiers and that's basically led to a bit of chaos. If Morrison, I think Morrison's time for Morrison to use the big stick, the big federal stick, and get some of these uh, recalcitrant uh, state leaders into line. And I think this is what uh, Anders uh, uh, Tegnell says is very true, that if, if you do keep changing policies, you lose trust of the electorate. And I've been saying that about Daniel Andrews. It would be coming, coming down so hard with Victorians, asking them to make unreasonable sacrifices, in my opinion, is actually leading to a lot more dissent than there should be. And... Uh, and, and you get these cliches like we're all in it together. What a load of BS that is. It's just just utter spin. Yeah, Anders, Anders was saying that the um, unlike uh, the flu, COVID-19 displays uneven uh, clusters, uh, haphazard clusters of, uh, of virus outbreaks. And it has to be, that's why you have to have a consistent policy because in a certain geographical location, you could have a cluster occur. And we've been seeing that in Australia. It's happened in Brisbane. Uh, Queen in Queensland, we thought we were doing pretty damn well, but all of a sudden it's just fallen in a heap. And the classic example, of course, is New Zealand. They were really smug. They thought they'd got it all worked out. Well, they, they had a big reality check. And I'm just wondering whether um, uh, Jacinda will actually survive this because I think it's a, a big slap in the face for her authoritarian leadership. But time will tell there. I've got no idea what Kiwis are thinking and I don't claim to know what Victorians are thinking for that matter. But common sense would say that they may take a hit with, uh, with the way that uh, their heavy-handed policies have actually backfired to some degree. And speaking of my old mate, comrade uh, Daniel Andrews, uh, he's been savaged in the media recently because he's come up with some lame half assed advertising campaign enlisting all his lefty mates in the entertainment industry. In other words, um, Walad Al Ali, he's the, the big big one, Walad Ali and Magna Sabalski, uh, two incredible left uh, of centre uh, comedians. Well, I don't know, I, well, Walad Ali doesn't, isn't purporting to be a comedian, just acts like one with, with what he says. But uh, Magna uh, Sabalski uh, regards herself as a comedian, although well, that, that can be open to interpretation. Um, but the, uh, the, the feedback from this advertising campaign featuring these people has been scathing. And uh, it could be just another nail in the coffin for Daniel Andrews. I believe that he is under siege now because uh, there are cooler heads in amongst the Labor Party. There's some quite ruthless people there. And if they see him as more of a liability than an asset, well, his head's going to be on the chopping block. And there is talk of there possibly being a move on him prior to uh, next year's election. So that could well happen. Stay tuned on that one. Oh, of course, there's another another uh, interesting development from, from Victoria, of course. Now they've got a no-hugging rule. I mean, it just gets more bizarre by the moment. It, it appears to me as if they're a government in panic mode now. They know that they've, uh, they've tried the, the hardline authoritarian approach and it doesn't seem to be working. They, they actually are encouraging figures on the number of cases at the moment, but we've still got a double figures when it comes to deaths. So even though the trend's looking okay right now, you just never know with this virus because like a, a cluster could break out anywhere and that's the problem. It's like herding cats trying to control the COVID virus. A bit more optimistically, um, uh, Donald Trump actually had a press conference today and he, uh, he announced that there's been some promising results from a therapeutic treatment using blood plasma of COVID patients who have survived and using this particular blood plasma to, uh, to treat uh, patients currently with uh, COVID-19. 
Apparently, uh, experts think that this is not going to be of use in extreme cases. So if you're uh, if you're in the, uh, the the intensive care unit, it may not work for you. However, it is good if for someone who's just been diagnosed with COVID, it, the extra antibodies in this plasma could well be the difference between a, uh, a swift recovery and and no recovery. So, look, I think it's good news. Of course, uh, news.com.au, which is the online version of the uh, the News Corp, uh, they've, they've got quite a few left of centre uh, reporters, uh, activists in inverted commas, I would call. Well, they're reporters in inverted commas, but they're activists, I should say. That's the way I should put it. Uh, but they um, they just basically focused on the fact that he left the press conference as if he was running away. he just taken a couple of, of questions. He actually complimented a reporter on the question, but the, as this is typical Australian reporting. They decided to put a negative spin on it and they put a photo up showing Donald Trump leaving with his head turned against the press gallery. I mean, it's just pathetic the way reporters act this, in this country. The, the uh, profession of journalism is, is just going downhill every day. <laughs> I don't... I don't know what Coles were thinking, but uh, I mean, a, 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 a supermarket chain is a private company and they have uh, the right to, to work out what strategy they think is going to work for their particular organisation. But it does appear to me as if Coles is now instituting a caste system when it comes to their supermarkets. So if you're in an affluent area, of course, you're in the A group and then you get all these added little benefits of being able to... Uh, have like boutique areas where you can make it, make your own uh, uh, pizzas, for instance. Uh, but these things are not available to to B or C group. C group gets bugger all, of course, um, and that's all based on basically uh, your your class in effect. The suburbs that are actually in the C category, uh, if you, you'll notice, they're in Clayton. I actually, funnily enough, I lived in Clayton as a child. Uh, before we moved to Caulfield. So uh, I was right in uh, in the middle of a, uh, a housing estate being built and we used to play in the unbuilt houses, which would be a real no-no for parents these days. Of course, kids wouldn't be allowed to do that these days, but it was like uh, a huge adventure playground uh, going through uh, the the uh, skeletons of houses that are in the, in the process of being constructed, all these brick veneer houses. So we had a lot of fun, you know, walking around the um, the half-built uh, structures, but would not be allowed these days, of course. And uh, but that was in Clayton. So Clayton is a very working-class suburb in the sand belt of Melbourne, and they're going to get the C grade treatment. So I think uh, Coles has to be very careful with this sort of strategy. It does appear to be a class-based system, and I don't know if I particularly like it. I know that if I go to Woolworths, I'll get a superior product to Coles, in my opinion, anywhere I go, they'll have the same sort of facilities. They do vary from from um, store to store. The worst one I came across was actually in Richmond. That was a shocking Woolworths. Uh, they didn't even seem to have bread. I thought that was really weird, but, but that's the exception rather than the rule. Overall, Woolworths is a much better supermarket, in my opinion. They have fresher produce and they have a better variety of produce. Uh, but I do shop occasionally at Coles, uh, because some things they have are, are fairly unique and cheaper. They have a, their own brand of Parmesan cheese, for instance, which definitely saves me money. So I'm not going to cut off my nose to spite my face. But I've definitely deprioritized Coles after I found out they ripped off dairy farmers uh, because they didn't pay the full amount of the extra 10 cent levy on fresh milk. Uh, they had to be forced to pay it. So in my opinion, Coles are corporate scumbags. And maybe I should give them the, uh, the Scumbag of the Week award. I think they're definitely deserving of it. Uh, it looks as though they're not only uh, trying to cheat, uh, have tried to cheat farmers in the past uh, from the, the money that they use to, to have as a PR exercise to say how, how good they are to the rural community. Now they're, they're deciding to have a class conscious uh, differentiation of... of um, of Coles stores, depending on where, your location. Um, I wonder where we're going to sit on this. Cairns, we're probably regarded as Hicks and we'll be given, regard, given the C-grade treatment. 
well, that's fine for me in a, in a way because I'll just go to Woolworths who are opening up in Cairns Central. Uh, they're further away at the moment, not that far, but a little bit further to walk. And But if, once they're in Cairns Central, it'll make it so much easier for me to shop at Woolworths. So uh, congratulations on getting my Scumbag of the Week award. Uh, it's about time I gave one. It's not to an individual, it's to a corporate. And there's plenty of corporate. I'll tell you what, I see, I, how, we, how about we do a double? Why don't we add Goodyear into the mix? Uh, that American company who decided to, to ban people wearing Magna hats but allow people wearing Black Lives Matter hats. Uh, you suck, as far as I'm concerned, Goodyear. And Trump outed you straight away, and the stock price of Goodyear shares dropped by 3% straight away. And hopefully they're on a, on a downward trajectory. Because I'll tell you what, they're going to alienate so many um, conservative voters through this action. It's just dumb as. And I don't think Coles has, has done much for its image either. So... How about we give them, we give them both uh, the Scumbag of the Week award? I think that, I'm, I'm a generous guy. I think we should spread, spread, the, spread the award around. So there you go. No, that's about it. Okay, well, I'm done. Um, I hope you guys are rugged up again in, in the southern states. It is going to be a bit tough for you in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours. Um, but... You know, once you're able to escape the gulag, think about maybe coming up this way. It's a nice lifestyle in Cairns, I've got to tell you. And um, I think we'll recover pretty well. And I, I think there'll be a lot more pressure on opening air routes and what have you. Um, I think that uh, this, these, these lockdowns will run the course. I think people are fed up with them. Uh, people want freedom. And I think there's going to be a lot more lobbying for this to... Uh, to be put in the past and let's get on with getting Australia's economy back in shape because God knows we need to be getting productive again. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever and uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic do both that'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me that's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.